in conversation with Narayani Ganesh, author of the eternal romantic My Father, Jemni Ganesan. This is a really beautiful book. It's, um, it's a very tender and moving tribute to her father who was many people rolled into one. Right? He, was, he was a wonderful father and also known as the Kadal Manan, but he was all like this infectious bundle of energy that he was. So I was thinking if you could read from that passage because though he read, led parallel lives, he was a wonderful father to you and I think those memories come through more in the book than anything else. Yes, I could uh, read something <clears throat> which would uh, show how close he was to his girls. <clears throat> Appa was mighty proud of his girls. He encouraged all of us to study well, though by the time I grew up, he had no time to pay personal attention to my studies like he had done with Revati and Kamala. <clears throat> I remember once we were being introduced to visitors by Appa. This is Revati, my first daughter, and she is studying medicine. Kamala, my second, also studying medicine. And this is the third, Narayani. He turned to me. Tell uncle which class you are studying. <laughs> so, but uh, though he didn't have much time, he did sit me down one day uh, when after completing a BA in economics from Stella Maris College, Chennai, I was confused as to what I should do next. I definitely wasn't interested in medicine. Appa's advice to me was that there are only two great professions in the world. One was medicine because you could heal people and the other he said was teaching because everyone needed guidance to gain knowledge and skills. And he added triumphantly, they are both gratifying professions. Patients and students never forget a good doctor or teacher. And why didn't he become either a doctor or a teacher? Oh well, he said I didn't have the opportunity then. Moreover, as an actor, I have the privilege of being a doctor, teacher, engineer, plumber, <laughs> singer, anything. So he was, he could just charm his way out of it. And he was also a very um, talented sportsman, wasn't he? That's right. Yes. So what qualities of his do you think are there in you? Oh my God. <laughs> I would say that, uh, you know, he, were, he, was, uh, he was an active sports person. Like he could play uh, good cricket, tennis, billiards. Um, in fact, when we used to go to Kodaikanal, he would even play croquet, which we found in the house he bought. And uh, I, I, actually, none of us have really um, taken up, you know, his active sports interest. But uh, even even uh, spectator sports, like initially, I did go and see those matches more for the thrill of seeing celebrities than to actually because than because of an interest in the game. But yes, I think uh, most of us have taken after him uh, when it comes to food because he loved food and uh, all of us love food and we all have a tendency to put on weight. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's also his love for life that drew the That's weaver, right. it's there yes. in all the girls. Yes, yeah. I think it's that never say die kind of a thing. So though, yeah. though you went through some really harrowing times, he led parallel lives and you have stepsisters as well, but you write about all of that with so much candor. Uh, was there some kind of uh, unspoken understanding between the sisters that it was okay to talk about all of this? I think it just came spontaneously because, um, well, it's, it's very obvious that whatever the parents did, it wasn't anything to do with the children's, uh, you know, the children did, didn't decide who they would be born to. I mean, they were just born uh, with no choice and so uh, it would be very unfair to, you know, judge them just because they were, you know, born of another relationship. And uh, the thing is that uh, all my siblings, they, they, are, they are all interesting persons in their own right. And, and very strong, they're very affectionate, yeah. Affectionate. And I think all of us have a fairly honest way of, uh, you know, uh, interacting with each other. There are no pretensions and no undercurrents as such. So it wasn't too difficult um, to relate to And that other. another passage which I really enjoyed which you read at the launch was when you went to the ashram and this was when he was in the, in the autumn of his life as it were, Ilya, but he was still so full of energy and his mind was razor sharp. Yeah. So would you like to read that passage? Um, yeah. In the early 1990s, Appa, Babjima and I had set off on an unusual pilgrimage to Haridwar and Rishikesh. Truthfully, it was a way we'd figured of rejuvenating Appa's spirits after a particularly harrowing time he'd had, a kind of post-midlife crisis. He wasn't feeling too well and he'd come to Delhi as chairman of the jury for the National Film Awards, an assignment he chose to withdraw from due to inclement health. Okay, I said, now that you're here, we might as well make the most of it instead of moping at home. 
So where do you want to go? I asked. He promptly replied, Hardwar Rishikesh. And so that's where we went. We spent an evening at the Dayananda Saraswati Ashram at Rishikesh with its own access to the Ganga. It was the very picture of tranquility. On that particular day, the ashram had several visitors, including many from outside India. So we all filed into a newly built hall and uh, I asked who's going to talk. And he said, Swami Dayananda Saraswati is here. He'll address the gathering himself. So my mother, father and I, we sat somewhere in the rear because the seats were fast getting filled up. At the appointed time, the Swami came on stage and announced, we have a special guest amidst us today. I request Mr. Ganeshan, the popular movie actor from South India, to come and address the gathering. I nudged my father. I said, he's talking to you, Pa. My heart was pounding. What would he say? He wasn't prepared for this kind of thing. So he appa got up, smiled shyly and walked towards the mic. He looked at the audience straight and said, I'm totally unprepared for this. I came here as a visitor like anyone else and was waiting to hear Swamiji speak. However, now that he expects me to talk, I couldn't possibly let him down. Amma and I exchanged worried glances because we were worried what would he say. Clear as a bell, Appa's steady voice rang through the makeshift auditorium. Unprepared as I am to deliver a talk at this August ashram, it would be appropriate for me to talk about nothing. <clears throat> My heart fluttered but went back to its regular beat when he completed the sentence. Nothing as in everything or zero, infinity if you like. What fills the space from zero to infinity? Nothing and everything. And so he went on in that vein and he talked about Vedanta and Vigyan, Einstein and Ashtavakra, Tennyson and Thiruvalvar, ascetics and actors. I looked at Amma who was beaming with pride. When Appa returned to his seat, I hugged him in relief as he asked, was I okay? That was an unforgettable and enlightening experience. And I told Amma, never underestimate him. <laughs> he was not only a voracious reader, but also maintained a record of everything because there are some very, very beautiful diary entries here. And I think the children and the grandchildren take after him because uh, one of his grandsons, Revati's son, yes. uh, sent an email uh, mm. about how it was when he first met his grandfather. So all of that is in the book. Yes. This book which talks about the man for whom life itself was oxygen. I'm in conversation with his daughter, Narayani Ganesh. Join us after a break. We have a lot more to talk about.